Sparty's back. Today we're looking at Dormammu's down TAC infinite starter and I have three different starters for you. I'm going to show you all three even though the third one is the best of the lot just because I'd like for you to understand if you are going to look for your own infinites, if you are going to try and execute this infinite, just to help you understand what it is that uh, is, is going into why that infinite works and why it might be good for other characters. Uh, so, down infinite TAC starters, generally speaking, are the most consistent because no matter how high you start, you end up at the same height regardless um, on on given characters. There are characters uh, where you end up at a different height so that it can be slightly awkward on. So, for example, if I just uh, bring in our sweet little raccoon here, uh, you can end up a slightly different height here. If I recall correctly, he ends up, you end up slightly higher. Uh, if I recall correctly, uh, with certain characters you can end up at different heights. Uh, however, it's the most it's the most accurate, uh, the most consistent TAC. Uh, the reason I say that is because the side TAC and up TAC are entirely height dependent. Wherever you start the TAC, uh, so if you execute it right up there, you can end up really high compared to if you started it very low. Uh, you can end up really high. So, depending on you know, the, the height and the character themselves. Some characters are floatier and end up higher off the TAC. You can end up at varying different heights. So it's very hard to get consistent infinite starters for Dormammu on characters who will be at different heights at all times. On the down TAC, it is possible to get fairly consistent methods though. So there is one method where you fly, unfly, and then Erdash down forward with Dormammu uh, into a heavy something like that. I was a little bit slow there. This method is reasonably consistent, but I find it's actually tricky. It's tricky because some days you, you, your adrenaline's pumping, you're in tournament or something, and you miss it because you were too fast. Sometimes you're a little bit slower, and then you leave it too long, you fly and unfly too slow. There's a few moving parts there which can all basically add up to you missing it in the end. So I thought, is there a way to make this consistent? Up to this point, the most consistent across all three, all three uh, infinite methods was either to eyeball it, try and eyeball it like that, or do something like Angelic does. Uh, his method is probably the most consistent across across the different heights. If you want to use one method and one method alone, uh, you can pretty much just do something like this. Uh, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Where you air dash down, get them to the lowest height possible, and then do something like that. But you have to eyeball then, because uh, you're very low on your air dash there. You have to eyeball how high you float up. It is a little bit, a little bit timing based, but there is essentially just trying to hit that, get to the right height, and, and you know, it, again, it's you're either on some days or you have off days with it, and you know, you know, you can hit it, you can hit it eight times out of ten sometimes, and the next day you can hit it one time out of ten because it's just, just one of those things where on a certain day, on a certain monitor with a certain amount of lag, it's a little bit tricky. But generally speaking, if you want to use one setup, that's the one to use across up, down, and side. You just have to practice getting them as low as possible. So for this, for a down TAC star, though, there are consistent methods. And the first one I found is this. Like that, you air dash up and fly, air dash up, back and fly, and then air dash down, forward, jump heavy. Like that, and the starter is consistent. This one on some characters is a little bit lax. On Dante, for example, it's not laxed at all. You have to do it as fast as possible. Air dash up back and fly, and then air dash down forward, jump heavy. Any of that is slower. Like if you air dash and slow, uh, you get hit them. Like, like watch this, for example. If you're too slow on that, and Dante ends up too low here. It won't work like that. They have to be quite high. And the reason for that is because the higher they are, the later the active frames, the later in the active frames of this move here, the fish hook, uh, the later in the active frames it hits them, meaning that instead of it being like a 10 frame startup normal, it's more like a 15 frame startup normal. I think it's 10 frames. It might have been 15 becoming 20, but it might be 10 becoming 15. Uh, because the active frames, it takes, like, unlike, like, say, for example, this normal, no matter where it is, it pretty much hits on the same frame. Uh, Damamu's jump heavy has an arc, so if you're over here, like that, it can take longer to hit than if you are, say, for example, right underneath it. Uh, so that means that the starter becomes a little bit funky. So that's good. Uh, that was the first one I found, and I tested it on 90% of the cast and then realized, hang on, uh, what about if I did something different? And the reason that I've got two different versions here, I will show you the second version, see if you can spot the difference. Uh, I actually messed it up. Again, Dante with both of these methods is quite strict on the timing. Whoops. And also talking whilst doing it is a little bit difficult as well. So, 
there's something different there compared to the first method. And if you if you've got a keen eye or you want to look back and you know, have a look again, uh, you might have noticed what I did there. The, the exact set the setup is exactly the same. So I'm doing air dash up back into fly, and then I'm doing an air dash down forward heavy. Now the difference is that with the first setup, I'm doing air dash down forward with light and medium for the dash, and then heavy for the heavy. That makes the heavy come out as soon as possible. If you plink dash or you air dash and then do light and medium into a heavy, the heavy comes out sooner than if you use the heavy within the air dash input itself. There is a hard coded limitation on how fast the button can come out if you just air dash with that same button, which means, and some of you with the cogs turning in your head might be getting this now, uh, that Dormammu off that spacing will, will basically be traveling for longer and the heavy will hit later in the setup which means you're a little bit lower and you're gonna end up with slightly different spacing. Why that's good is because this version is consistent across, say, I think it's like eight more characters. 28 characters, the first method works works with, where you do air dash downfall with light medium, uh, and then air dash, sorry, the, the heavy comes out straight after it, so you do that. Uh, that works on 28 characters, and you have to be quick on most of them, you have to be very quick. The tiny means not that lenient. Uh, the method where you do medium and heavy into heavy, that works on 36 characters across the cast. Now I was having trouble on small characters, for example, Light Rocket Raccoon, because if, you, if I do that same setup right now on him, I'm at a much higher height and this is not gonna work right now. It just doesn't work. The, the Raccoon ends up at a much higher height when he comes out uh, relative to the ground. Basically he's higher than he would have been otherwise, uh, than say Dante is or Nemesis is, for example. And I was thinking, how do I actually get this to work? This is tricky. I don't understand um, how exactly, why exactly that difference is there, and I don't understand how to make this work. But I started playing about with a lot of different methods, and one of the methods that I found was this one here. Like that. Uh, so you do an air dash forwards, and then an air dash, well, flight. Air dash forwards, a flight. Oh, let me get the correct character in. Air dash forward into flight and then an air dash down forward uh, into dark hole and it's the plinked version that version as well so let's try that one more time uh, that time i think is a little bit off the smalls are still difficult but this method does work if you input it correctly i think that's correct yeah there we go, you just gotta be a little bit faster with him. Uh, that was correct, I just missed the link right there. So the reason this works at all is because this game has a generous buffer window of three frames. So every time you're doing a combo like that, uh, the dark holes have a little bit of a buffer window coming out of them. So if I do a dark hole, then during the recovery of that dark hole, I can press heavy three frames before the end of the move and the game will cue the, the move that I press, heavy in this case, to come out as soon as possible upon recovery. Which means I can press, I can press heavy on the frame that Domamu recovers. I can also press it the frame before that. I can press it the frame before that and the frame before that and the heavy will come out on the first possible frame after Domamu recovers. That means you've got a four frame window to press the heavy to come out in the correct space. So if I do that on Rocket Raccoon and I set it up correctly, like this, that looks a little bit low actually. Uh, the heavy is a four frame link. Now it's a little bit tricky on the smalls to get this right just because they are so small and you can actually squish them out of the way. So it's a little bit tricky, but on say other characters like, like Dante, the rest of the cast, it's actually really easy to do. Again, while talking, I have difficulty doing this, but uh, this should work right now. Watch this. The spacing is very, very consistent on any character who's a little bit bigger. Now let's have a look at a even bigger character though. So same method here. And the buffer of four frames makes that work consistently. Go and try it out in training mode. See how this feels for you. It will feel a little bit funky at first, especially if you're practicing on a small character. But I promise you, I've tested this. It works on 41 characters across the cast. Now, one thing I should mention, just before I move on to a slightly different topic, is with those small characters, if you are doing a TAC infinite rep here, and characters like Zero, for example, they can end up a little bit tricky to combo. Because they're so small, the air dash down light can be hard to hit. So just a little bit of a trick in height management here for them is instead of just doing always heavy into dark hole, heavy into dark hole, you can do this, where you can link dark hole into dark hole. 
Uh, I like this method a lot, so I'll use it on the first one like that, but this second one, you can link heavy like dark hole into dark hole. Uh, usually what I do is I prop them up that little bit higher with a light medium heavy. You'll see when I do it right now. Try it again. That looks okay. I think that's gonna actually I think that's gonna drop. You sort of you get a sense of when these things are gonna drop. Again, it is tricky on the smalls. And again, a bit too low there. Let's just try it on Dante. So, he's quite high here, uh, so I'm going to have to drop him a little bit, but then if I do light, medium, heavy, into dark hole, into dark hole, that regulates the height really well. You just don't want to get them too high there. So then you can just do light, heavy, and then link the dark holes like that. It's really good for height management. Uh, it allows you to get them really low. The light, heavy version drops them a lot. The light, medium, heavy version drops them a little bit. Depends on who it is. Zero, for example, you can combo the whole way that way. It's a really good way to consistently hit them with uh, good height management for it. Now, there are some specific exceptions. Let me try and get a couple here that this might work on. Uh, Hulk is an exception. He needs a unique setup. So the other nine characters who the, the my third setup there does not work on, uh, are characters like, for example, uh, let's see, Firebrand, uh, Shenko, and Hulk. So Hulk, uh, Zero, these characters require different setups to do it with. There are consistent setups. Some of them are varying degrees of difficulty. Uh, but let me just pick, uh, I'll say Hulk. I might do Firebrand, and is Sentinel a good one to pick? Let me have a look at the method of Sentinel. Is that a unique one? Sentinel, can I do that version just... Uh, Oh uh, yeah, that one's good. I'll do I'll do the Sentinel version as well. So Sentinel is a unique version too. <laughs> so for this, Hulk is a bit of an awkward one, and I'll show you what happens if I try and do the other setups first. So let's try and do the other setups on Hulk. I'll do the uh, the Type 2 one, the one where I dash into heavy like that. Look at the spacing. Look at how far away I am from him. He pushes you because of his fatness, basically, because he's so big. He actually pushes you really far away from the corner when you TAC him. So it makes it difficult, and I'll try the other version, try my Type 3 version, and for some reason, you're a bit too low for that version right there. You're too low. Look at how low you end up on that guy. He's too low for Domami. Domami comes in quite low on him. Probably something to do with his size. He's just squishing the screen about as you come in. So, instead of doing Erdash up back, sorry, Erdash up back into Plank Dash like that, what you can do is you can do Erdash up. Like that. And that's a really easy one. That is pretty lax on the timing. Uh, again, you can height manage the same way, even on big characters like that. Uh, now that's really good for Hulk. That's one way that that works. Firebrand is a little bit of an interesting one. Now Firebrand and and Sentinel both have the same method that you can use for them. Firebrand is a little bit more difficult on. Let's see if I can get this. I think I need to do some. I think the setup is slightly different. Oh, there we go. Got it first time. Now again, the height management there. I should have done. I should have done the height management as soon as possible. <laughs> Try that one more time. Air dash down forward, fly. Air dash forward, dash heavy. There we go. So that's firebrand now firebrand is a tiny character you wouldn't expect that to work on consistently but it does uh and it also works the same method for sentinel as well i think i think actually sentinel's a little bit harder it's weird you see it's a little bit weird i don't understand why sentinel's harder to do that on than firebrand is it's interesting Oh, I, I know the reason. You're slightly lower on Sentinel. No, again, it's these big bodies. Uh, you're slightly lower, so you need to be hitting Firebrand with the top part, like the, basically, that part, the very end of it, on Firebrand, and you need to be hitting the bottom part, that bit, on the very bottom part of the arc, on Sentinel. So, I have a full list here. All 50 characters have a consistent method. The smalls, I will admit, are the hardest. The smalls are the hardest to get with, say, the Type 2, that version where you, uh, sorry, the Type 3 where you air dash forward and then do that. Um, just because Domami's body will squish them a little bit, they are less consistent than a lot of the other characters are. And again, the, the nine characters who you can't get this on, you have to use a unique method for, uh, are Firebrand, Shenko, Hulk, Hulk is easy though, Modok, uh, I think Modok had 
had a very unique version. Sentinel, Shuma, Storm, Tron, and Zero. Those nine characters are a little bit trickier, but the rest of them can all be done, especially if they're a normal body size or even just a reasonably small body size. You can do them with the Type 2 method. So that's it for today. Uh, that's this little explainer. I will link my spreadsheet. I'll create a shareable version, and I'll put it into the YouTube description below. If you have any questions about this, if you have any trouble executing it, if you didn't understand any part of what I was describing here in this method... Uh, then let me know in the comments down below. Uh, as you look through the spreadsheet as well, if you are looking at it and you're confused by my color coding and anything else that I've done or what method to use or how to use it, again, pop me a message down below. Uh, if this is helpful to you, leave a like and subscribe, please. Uh, and otherwise, have a good day. I'll see you guys later. Peace.